Welcome back. Before we go any further, I've spotted a problem. Look at this ticket. Ticket 206, 3 blind mice. The status is in progress. Yet, when we go into update, the status isn't in progress. It's open. So, we're going to fix that now. Let's find the view that's at fault. So, we're in tickets, resources, views, tickets, and... No, that's not tickets, that's tickets. I think it'll be show. What we need is the selected attribute on one of these options. <laughs> Preferably the option that is selected. So, just to test this, uh, we'll put a selected on the open, sorry, on the closed option there, just to make sure that works. Go in, and it's closed. So we're in the in the right place here. So I'll just undo that. So the question then becomes, which of these options is selected? So we can do that with a ternary inside this echo. And we will test the ticket status. So does the ticket status equal open? That's the question. If so, output selected. Oh, lost my thread. Else, output nothing. So we'll copy that, put it in the in progress option, and we'll do the same for the remaining select, the remaining option, sorry, closed. Save that back on the page. The status here is in progress, which is what it is there. Let's update it to open, see what happens. So the updates worked. Let's go back in. Open, that's correct. This one is closed. Let's go in and just check. Yep, that's closed. So our change has worked. So now that we've fixed that bug, we want to get on to the matter of validation. See, in update, if we blank out the summary, for example, click update, no validation, just crash, which is bad. So we need to uh, introduce some validation which says something like summary cannot be blank. Now we can do this in the controller. So let's find the controller, app, HTTP controllers, ticket controller. And if we are in this update screen, the method will be update. First of all, I'm going to show you how to add the validation directly to the, uh, the controller here. Um, and then I'm going to show you a better way to extract that validation to a form request. So without further ado, let's uh, get started in the controller. This dot uh, validate. Just make a space for that. Now within here, we need to put the rules. So summary, we'll keep it simple. Um, we're just going to insist that it's entered. So we need to put required in there. And what else have we got? We have got the description. So, same for description. Like I say, we're just going to keep it simple here and just insist that uh, these are uh, mandatory fields. So save that. Let's see what happens on the page. Let's go back first. Go back in. Delete that. Update. Didn't work. 
I think I see it, and I bet you did too. This should be the incoming request. Save that. Let's try again. Back. Just refresh that. Let's get rid of the summary update. OK. So, it looks like nothing's happened, but in actual fact, uh, the code is doing half of what it needs to do. It's actually validating um, the the form and because it fails validation, because the summary is blank, because it fails the validation, it gets redirected back to the form. The only thing that's missing and the thing that we're about to do is um, the error message telling us that the summary needs to be filled in. Let's do this in stages. First of all, we'll apply a class uh, to indicate some kind of error, and then we'll condition the uh, assignment of that class. So taking the summary, we'll put it on the actual input, and we'll give it the class of, uh, I think it is invalid. So let's just add that, save that. Refresh the page. OK, so we've got uh, a red border for the input. So that in that will indicate uh, that there's an error. Back in the code, we're going to make use of the errors message bag. And we're going to say, let's just keep this separate for now. Right, errors, spelt properly. If it has summary, so we'll use a ternary here. So if uh, summary is in error, we will output is invalid into this class. Like so, else nothing. And we'd better put a blank in there. Actually we don't need one because we've got a blank there so I'll just leave it as it is. Save it and before we go copying and pasting this to all the other inputs let's just check that it works on summary. So uh, I'll just go back and go in uh, let's blank it out click update. Okay so it knows there's an error. It knows that the uh, the summary was blank. Unfortunately, it's put back the original summary, but I know how to fix that. We will use the old function, which will uh, reinstate the old value uh, that was originally on the form, or if there wasn't one, then some other default value. So um, I'll just type this out first. So, in fact, We'll get rid of this because it's confusing and we will use the old function. So it's summary. So this means the old value of summary and if that's not there then we'll load it from the ticket. Save our changes back to the page um, and go back, go back in and we'll blank it out. Click update. Woohoo! That is good. So it's kept, it's retained the value we submitted, i.e. blank, and it's also applied the error highlighting which we want. So that's good. Um, you will notice that what is missing is an error message, but uh, we're going to sort that out now. We do have some styling decisions to make here. Um, we could either display an error message directly below the field in error, so summary is blank or description is blank here, or you could have a list of all the errors at the bottom. Now for this example I think we'll just display an error message directly below the input that's uh, at fault. Now for this we can use this condition here. So I'll copy that and within the form group 
we will add an if statement. We will say if errors has summary. So if summary is in error, then we'll have a span. And what shall we have in it? Um, well, first of all, I think we can add a class. Uh, if I remember rightly, I think it's help block. And within that, a spinner. I've just, oh, it's not a spinner. It's a span, of course. Within the spinner block, um, we're going to output. Oh my god. Oh, come on. We shall output uh, the error message itself. Errors. Right, let's try that. Let's give this a whirl. Uh, just go back, back, and blank it out again. Oh my, oh I know what, I know what's wrong. As I was typing it, I realised it was wrong, obviously. Um, it's the first error, because you could have many. Uh, the first error for summary, and that's how you write it. So, go back to the page, refresh, blank it out. Oh, that's looking good. We can now apply what we've done for summary to the other... Well, actually, we don't need to apply it to uh, status, because you can only choose valid options. So we'll do what we've done for summary uh, to the description as well. So we have got a conditioned class uh, after form control. Copy that. Where's it? Oh, it's gone. Copy it properly. And apply that to the um, description here after form control. And it's checking the description. Okay, so that's done. And oh, yes, we've got it's just reinstating the old value in the input field. Let's copy the whole damn thing. And remember, it's for the description. Oops. Okay, is that correct? Let's have a look. So it's saying, if description has an error, apply is invalid, else apply nothing to the class, and also reinstate the old value for description. Or, ah, look at that, good job we checked. Get the description from the ticket. Okay, that's looking good. And we also need the error message as well. So we'll put that in here, and we shall replace the field name, description. Okay, save that, refresh the page. Oh no. Hmm, unexpected semicolon. Right, okay, so here is the line in question. Um, looking at this, that echo looks okay. 
Um, okay, back to the code. Du, 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 du. Old. There's the opening bracket. Okay, so there's no closing bracket here. That's why it thinks there is a... Um, okay, let's add the closing bracket. Save that. Refresh. Okay, so... Get rid of the description. Oh, it's highlighted in error. And we get the error message. The description field is required. Let's do it for the summary as well. That still works. That's good. And there's no way that we can possibly get the uh, status wrong because we're restricted um, to only valid options. So that's looking good. I did want to show you form requests in this video, but it's getting a bit long. So uh, I think uh, we'll we'll cut it there, and I'll show you uh, form requests in the next video. Uh, suffice it to say that um, at the moment we have the validation uh, within the controller, the ticket controller. We've got it here. Uh, we can actually extract that out to a form request, making the code a little bit neater. Uh, so we'll do that in the next video.